Hi, I'm Tim and I am the Tinkering Turtle. Today we're going to show you the process of taking off the old nut brand mechanical calipers and replacing those with the Tektro Ares MD-300s, I think. i am also received new rotors from MagiCycle along with calipers and I'm going to show you how to remove and put the new rotors on both the front and the back tire. Um, the process is virtually the same on both, um, but if there are any differences, I will let you know. Let's get to it. Okay, what we're going to need to do today is I'm going to use an M5 Allen wrench. I've got my park tool Allen wrench here so I can work on the, the wheel once I get it off here on the bench. I have a pair of vice grips and some end caps for the cables. I also have some isopropyl alcohol with a rag. I got the Tektro Ares MD 300s from MagiCycle. They came with bolts. The bolts do have little bits of Loctite on it so I won't need Loctite and I also got two 180 millimeter rotors that I will be putting on as well and I do have nitrile gloves because as you know you do not want a bunch of contamination on the rotors or brakes when you put them on. Okay to start with we're going to take the two bolts out of the caliper pull the caliper off out of the way Okay, once the bolts are loose, simply slide the caliper up off the rotor, lean it out of the way. I'm going to take the bolts out and the bracket off so they don't fall and I get them lost. So I got the bolts in the bracket, set that aside. Now to remove the front wheel, you simply pop the clamp off of the axle. Loosen up the back nut a little bit, and it should slide right up and out. And that's how you remove the back wheel. I'll also take the skewer out of this when I'm working on the rotor. Just remember when you put it back on, which orientation the springs go, and I'll try to show that when I do when I put it back on. Okay, I'm going to take the skewer out, so I'm going to unscrew the nut off the back. Now to come off with the spring, then I'm going to pull the skewer out. I'm going to lay this down on my bench. And I'm going to put the, the spring, which the small cone goes on the inside. And I'm going to put the nut back on right now, so I don't mess that up later. I'll set that aside. So the bolts on here are number four Allen wrenches. I'm going to use my park tool. Get it all the way down in there. Break them loose. They're just a short bolt. At this point I'm going to put on my nitrile gloves so they don't contaminate either the old parts or the new ones. The rotor just comes right up and off. Notice a couple things about the rotor is on the rotor you'll find arrows and that shows you the direction of the rotation of the wheel. So I had it here, the wheel rotates this way. You definitely want to put and I've got the, I don't know if you can see this, but the direction of the tread goes the same way. So I'm definitely going to want to make sure I put the new ones on the same, with the same orientation of rotating that direction. Now the new rotate, or the new rotor, you'll see arrows that show the direction. You'll see the size. Notice I'm handling it inside. I'm trying not to touch the surface. I'm going to take a little isopropyl alcohol and rub 
both the front and back real quick and I'll also do it again once it's on the wheel again. It's important you get all the oil and contaminants off the rotor as you can. All the writing should be on the outside of the wheel, not the inside. And when you put it on that way, you'll see that these spokes and the arrows go the direction of the rotation of the wheel. All right, the new bolts that came with the Tektro Aries are Torx. So I had to get a Torx driver here and I set up a, a socket wrench to use that. So I take one of the bolts. Be sure not to cross thread it as it goes in. Snug it up and then back it off about a half a turn. That way it's loose on that bolt. And I'll repeat the process for the other six bolts. Take it down to snug, back it out about a half a turn. Okay, now I've snugged all these bolts down. You can see the, the rotor's still loose. I snugged them all down, backed them off a half a turn so there's a slight gap so what you can move it. The wheel turns this way, so I'm gonna wanna rotate the rotor back against the, the holes against the screws, rotate it back the opposite direction before I start tightening the bolts. That's to take up any slop and stop the rotor from having extra shear force as the brakes come on. Now to tighten these bolts, you're going to want to do it similar to the way you do a car. You're going to want to skip and hit every other one. And it's a six bolt pattern, so you're going to skip, skip, go to the next one, skip, skip. And then you want to tighten them down. And for now, the first time around, you just snug them down so they're tight. And I'm using a T20 torques on the bolts that came with the uh, rotor. Okay, now I've got them all snug down. The, the rotor's rotated back, the bolts are snug down, now I want to torque them in. I do it by hand. If you have a torx driver, look up the torque setting. It should be to between four and six newtons of torque if you have a torque driver. The other way to do it is to do it by feel. You come back about four inches and you put about 11 pounds of force on it and you just do that by hand. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna torque those in. Again, using the same methodology, skipping every other one. Now it's nice and tight, torqued on, and ready to go back on the bike. Before I put it on the bike, I'm going to use a little isopropyl alcohol and wipe down the surfaces where the brake pads will go again front and back just to make sure I don't have any oils or dirt or debris from the process of putting this on. Another thing I'd like to point out while I'm here is don't ever use grease or oils on the bolts. You have the Loctite but if the, as the brake rotors heat up and dissipate the heat it can actually have the oil come out if you put them on the bolts and you could contaminate your surface so don't do that don't use any grease or anything on your bolts um, for the brake system okay i put the skewer back in i like the uh, cam side on the same side as the rotor that's just the way i do it i don't know if there's a set rule but from what i've read that seems to be pretty common remember when you put your skewer back in there's a conical spring the small side goes inside towards the tire and the big side goes out 
I'm going to make sure the axle set down in the in the forks. I'm going to tighten up the back side. Make sure that it has a lot of pressure going on. I always put the cam side along the upside of the forks. That way if it comes loose and falls off, you can visually see it from riding the bike. If you put it down and it comes loose, it can just flop around down there and you won't be able to see if there's a problem. Now to take off the caliber, I just loosen the bolt. I don't want to take it out all the way. I just want to make it so the cable slides back and forth. And then I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and sometimes you can pry that off this time I'm not going to be able to do it so I'm just going to clip the cable and I'm just going to take that end off because I'm going to have to slide the cable back out through that make sure you keep the rubber piece that goes on here in case you ever decide to use these calipers again. Now to put the new caliper on, these are the Tektro Aries calipers. The adjustment goes on the inside and the lever arm goes on the outside and the big side of the bracket goes on the top stud, which in this case is the bottom because I have the, it flipped upside down. So you'll slide it on the rotor and you'll start the bolts. Okay, once it's snug down, I'm just going to back it off so that it's slightly loose and then I'll work on the other side. Okay, so I snug both the bolts down. I backed them out just a little bit so it's loose on there and I'll need to do that so I can adjust it to the rotor. At this point, you're going to want to run you want to tighten up this barrel connector all the way so that the most amount of threads you can get out of there you can. You're going to slide the cable up through the barrel connector and the, the metal part should be inside the barrel connector on both the barrel connector here and the barrel connector on the handles down below. So you're going to want to loosen up the bolt on the crank arm and you're going to slide the cable through kind of underneath that nut there. Again, making sure this is all the way up in and the cables are in the barrel connectors on the handles here and here. Now once you have the cable in here, you're going to want to pull the crank back before you tighten it up. That's to take up all the extra slack. And you're pulling on the cable, holding the cable out, pushing the crank in, and tighten up that bolt right here on the crank arm. And that'll be fine for now. We can either adjust the, the finish feel um, for the brake lever um, when we get it right side up, um, but for now that'll be fine. Now let's, before the cable gets frayed, let's put a new cap on it. Now I just got a, a bunch of these little um, cable caps off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I'll put the link in the description. Um, but, I mean, they're a pack of 100 for almost no money. Just a few bucks if I remember right. I don't remember. But to put these on, you slide them over the end of the cable. And right now it just slides in and out without any trouble. You'll use the wire cutter portion of your vice grips or whatever you got just to crimp it. You're not trying to cut through it, you're just trying to crimp it onto the cable. And I usually try to do that in a couple different orientations, a couple different spots. That way the cap won't come off and the cable won't fray that way. It gives you a nice little finished end. So right now the caliper is still loose on the bracket. I'm going to leave it that way until I get the bike down on the ground and then I'll do the finish adjustments there. Now we'll switch to the rear tire and um, get that started. Now we're going to do basically the same process back here. We're going to pull the caliper off 
Then we're going to remove the rear wheel. I have done a video on removing the rear wheel off the Magicycle in previous videos. I'll link that in the description below. So I'm not going to really spend a lot of time showing you that stuff again. But the process is the same. You pull off the rear caliper, you remove the rear wheel, and we'll go over to the bench and put the new rotor on. Let's get to it. Okay. I'll remove the bracket and the bolts and put those aside. If you are using a bike stand to remove tires, make sure you don't got, like in this case, a lot of the weights on this side. I had to actually add weight to the leg on the bike stand so it didn't, didn't flip up and off because there's so much weight on the front of this bike now. This will work for now. I just put a bag of salt on there so I should be fine until I get the rotor back on. So the process is the same on the back side as it is in the front. I've got the tire so it spins this way. I'm going to be looking for those arrows on the new rotor to put on. I'm just going to take, these are actually torque screws so I'm going to take those out and put new ones in when I put the new rotor in. Okay, I've removed all the bolts. I'm going to slide the old rotor up and off the cable. There's a little al isopropyl alcohol. Okay, you'll see the text is all on the outside. My arrows are going this way. The tire set up to go that way. I'm going to feed in the wire. So again, tighten them down, loosen them up. I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of them. Now, just like we did on the front one, the tire ro rotates this way, you're gonna rotate the brake back because that's what happens when you grab it, it goes back. You don't want a bunch of slop, so it goes smack and shears off bolts. So you're gonna grab the center here, don't touch the surface, rotate it back and tighten up the bolts. And do that on two while you're holding pressure. Now the, the rotor doesn't move and go ahead and do the offsetting tightening pattern that we talked about. And just like we did before, do a little rubbing alcohol, make sure that rotor is good and clean. And let's get back to putting it on the bike.
Okay, I'm going to repeat the same process, removing the caliper. See if I can pop this cap off. That one came off, so I don't have to clip the cable. That's good. Loosen the cable. Slide it up and off. Make sure I don't lose the rubber piece. And the caliper is removed. Pull the cable up out of the way so I can get the Tektro brake put on. Again, you got to make sure that you're putting it on the correct way. The adjustment will be on the back side. Make sure you're putting the bracket on the same way, the right way. Careful not to cross thread the bolts. And the same process as we used on the front. We're going to run the, this barrel connector all the way down in. We're going to snake the cable through it carefully so we don't fray it. Make sure the metal part's down inside. I'm going to loosen this bolt a bit. I'm going to run the cable down through. I'm going to hold this arm forward until there's a little bit of tension on it. Tighten that bolt back up. And just like you did before, we're going to put a cap back on the end of the cable so it doesn't fray. You should use a pair of wire clippers to crimp it. A couple different spots, a couple different orientations so it doesn't come off. And that's that. So that completes replacing the rotors and the calipers on both the front and the back of the Maja cycle. Now we have Tektro Aries mechanical brakes. I'm going to take this down off the stand and finish up this video and stay tuned for the next video because on the next video I'm going to show you how to adjust the Tektro Aries MD300 brakes on the Maja cycle e-bike. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, concerns, issues, put them in the comments below and I will see you next time.